I'm making an engineering video. It is all about behind the scenes what's happening in the engineering world of airplanes during the COVID. Come to Etihad, Etihad Engineering, but this is not Etihad. This is another Dreamliner, LATAM, from South America in yes. Abu Dhabi, very rare. Yes, as a surprise, we are not serving only Etihad. We're serving customers from all over the world, from all the continents. LATAM is one of our ah. customers. And many other customers coming here for servicing the aircrafts. And uh, now during the pandemic, we're doing storage service for them as well. But I want to understand, what did you do? How did you store a plane? You know, what's all this process behind the scenes and how long it takes? As you can see, Sam, we, uh, everything that system is, any system is uh, uh, exposed has been protected. P2 system, angle of attack, yeah. landing gears are protected and well, well wrapped. And as you, can, as you can walk, you can see the protection which does not uh, uh, allow any dust to go inside. The leading edges are protected with, uh, with a special material to prevent corrosion. Oh yeah, Engine. I can see this uh, green liquid here. Yes. That's avoid the corrosion. To avoid corrosion when they come back to service. That's right, because here in the Middle East it's also very humid. Yes, and this is this is an engineering solution. We used it to with uh, relation with Boeing. When you look at the engines, the engines are off in the shop for the preservation, but we have to protect the nacelles and all the equipment until the engine is back in, in, in place. You see the windows are actually individually wrapped because you know, Dreamliner, if you've flown it, there's a dimmable window. There's no actually window shade to shut it down from inside. So you guys have to have a creative solution to actually seal the window. You are 100% correct because the, the windows in the 787 are electronic. So the aircraft depowered, so they don't, there's no power. So we need to protect the cabin interiors and the, and the windows itself. So we cover it, we, we fabricate a, a, a blanks and then we cover it and make sure there's no uh, heat. Uh, effect will happen later when we take back the aircraft to service. How long it takes to completely store 787 like this? Actually, Sam, it will take around uh, four to five days to uh, prepare the aircraft, test all the systems, make the, everything is re ready for the preservation. We technically put the, all the system into sleep, depower the aircraft, and then we start preserving the aircraft, protecting, sealed it up, and then we put it in, in, the, in the configuration which is, will, we will be there for a a year or more. But how often you need to come back once the plane's stored? You need to kind of check on the plane, right? Due to the pandemic with the new program we work with the OEMs, we're doing this uh, every 30 days. So every 30 days we come to the aircraft, we, 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 we unwrap it, we power it up, we test the system, service it, and then we put it back again. That's crazy heat outside, much yeah. cooler inside there in the cabin. You're right, you're right. Yeah, 767, haven't been inside for a long time. As you can see, Sam, this is the uh, 767 from the time with a new configuration of business class, one, two, one. Yeah, look at this, marble table, new business yeah, class configuration. Exactly, magnificent. And uh, our engineer came this morning as part of the seven days inspection to uh, monitor the humidity and do the uh, inspection checks every seven days, differently from the, what we have outside for the 787. It's a different program. We are placing the, the desiccant bags here inside the aircraft ah. to, to, to check the humidity and to be this is to take, for us. Yeah, to suck all the moisture, yes. just like the closet. So every, so every seven days when we come, we check if there's any humidity, we know that, and then we, we do control measure for it. And you just put it on the ground like this too. Well, you can see the uh, humidity indicator cards are placed everywhere to, uh, to monitor the humidity and give us indication. If it dries for any reason, we need to take the maintenance and control measure for it. As you can see, Sam, we are inside the uh, 767 cockpit. We are uh, placing all the humidity indicators everywhere, from the desiccant bags to the humidity indicator, just to, as well to make sure there's no humidity going to the cockpit and uh, run out the expensive uh, electronic component. Here, as you can see, the cockpit is blanked up in the unusual situation because of the storage. Usually the sunlight will be coming in. Most of the, a lot of the systems are deactivated or uh, stored, but we power up the aircraft every seven days to make sure that the systems are working fine and then we make sure that the aircraft it is ready and shape whenever we do the deep reservation and back to service everything will be functioned properly the situation is improving and more airplanes coming back and more people start to flying this aircraft is the reverse of the storage which we've seen before this aircraft now coming back from storage we're doing the reverse of the storage we are uh, de the aircraft, uncover it, uh, flush all the systems, 
clean everything and start to testing all the system and put it back in operation so it can start fly again. How long it take to plane from storage back to service? How many hours of work it takes to do that? It will take around three to four days of, uh, with a crew of 15 people working 24 hours to bring back the aircraft wow. flying. It's great to see one by one some airplane are coming back from storage flying back in the sky again. I mean, that's just a lot of work today, what you showed me. Under 50 degrees of heat, we're seeing uh, how to store the plane and also how to check the plane during the storage and then how to reactivate the plane. A lot of work. Hats off to your team to keep aviation going during the COVID time. Yeah, correct, Sam. And thanks for the team who helped to make the aircraft protected, 100% reliable in order to fly back in the sky. Hi Sam, welcome to the operations control room. This is where all the planning and preparation happens so that we make sure when the aircraft come in, we are ready to start working. It's huge! Yeah, it's great. We've got a lot of aircraft here, but we're going to go up there. We're going to go up there? You know, anyone think YouTubers Live is fun? Had to think about it. We're experiencing it all. Going up there, going in the water, going down. 50 degrees heat, experience it all to show you the reality. Ready? I'll strap in. Let's, Let's go. go. Big boys toys in the engineering, isn't it? <laughs> Definitely big boys toys. And this way, we get a different type of aerial view. Yeah. Not what you normally see from a plane, but looking down on the plane. I feel like going to a theme park, a Six Flags theme park. <laughs> This is the view from the top. What do you think? This is really a daunting view. Like, you got to appreciate how huge this engineering hangar it is from um, a chairlift view like this. Probably yeah. 50 meter now, yeah. looking down. Amazing, really. It gives you the whole perspective. Yeah. Really amazing view. So, Sam, want to do a skydive now? Skydiving here? Ooh. Oh, this is an A330, right? It's all got the paint stripped off. See the metal here? Yep, it's bare, stripped right back to the bare metal. So we can do the inspections, we can look at the skin. We're doing the complete check on it. And then it'll go into the paint shop and it'll be repainted, ready to go back in there. Is this an ABC check? This is, a, this is a heavy C check. Heavy C check. A heavy C check and it's also part of an end of lease transition. So it's moving from one operator onto another operator. Aircraft maintenance checks are broken down to A, B and C checks. A checks are small, small checks carried out overnight. B checks are intermediate checks and C checks are what we carry out here in the hangar, which are the heavy maintenance intervals carried out every 12 to 18 months up to a C check, which is sometimes called a D check. And that means everything comes off the aircraft and everything is rebuilt again. It's really interesting. You see the gear is completely checked up from the ground. It's not very often you see an airplane checked up like this in the D check. So you can he see here, Sam, the engineers have spotted some damage. They've mapped it out. They're going to blend it all out and make it nice and ready so it can be repainted over. Wow. So this is what the aircraft looked like with no seats on board. Yeah, it's really different to the airplane we normally see. Wow, different, very different. Looks like this window is damaged, Sam. It's been flagged up some scratches and some damage to it so looks like that one will have to be replaced and this is probably the new window here oh that's also what you do in your uh, heavy check you check through all the windows and replace damaged ones but this one looks pretty good to my collection if i can take it but david you said this airplane is under a c check a heavy c check that's how right. long it takes a heavy c check would take between three and six weeks depending on what the findings are sometimes a little bit longer but hopefully we can keep this one under control Hey. Hi, hi Sam, how, how are, are you? you man? Welcome to the cabin shop. How a cabin it? shop? Yes, it's had engineering. Oh, I see, shop. this is the furnishing, the yes. interior. Yes, so yeah. we do uh, headrest and backrest and bottoms. I remember the old style yes. Paris. I love this one, yes. the it's seat good. cover. And, and it's a new style. Yes. Can you imagine an airline, you know, you have to cover every single detail. There's so much. There's this sewing machine station here. Yes, so we do here fabrication of covers, backrest, headrest, leathers. Sam, what do you think this is? 
I don't know, it's a net, it's some sort of cover, right? Yeah, it's an engine cover. Ah, it's so, engine cover. Um, yeah, unfortunately we have to cover some engines because of the parking. Yeah. But um, yeah, this is the current situation. Yeah, I mean, you are making a lot of these cover right now. There's so many planes stored. That's true, I yes. saw them this morning. That's I hope all the planes will be flying back in the sky very soon. It's really interesting to relate the thing we see on the airplane in a workshop like this. These are the 777 first class seats, with leather seats. And look at all this headrest cover, seat cover, latest seat cover too. Look yeah. at this. It's actually really interesting. Um, you know, often we don't actually think where this is come from. It's actually all manufactured here, yeah. yes. locally in the shop, in the airline. We do everything in the back here of the galley parts, toilets, side walls. We do cleaning, refurbishment, and um, putting back to the aircraft again. So this is a sidewall on a 777. So it's in the shop for re rework of the laminate and uh, cleaning of the windows, cleaning from the back. This gets very dusty and back to the aircraft again. And this is actually interesting. This is behind the skin of the airplane. And you have this board here yeah. where the window is fixed on top like this. Correct. So I, this is repairing a toilet door. It's a toilet door, yes. My gosh. So we replace the placards. Ah. We replace the locks. Let me take a photo. Very interesting, really. Um, you know, you don't normally see this thing behind the scenes. No. And then this one also like re doing something about the bulkhead. Yes, so wow. uh, again, replacing the laminates. Maybe this from corroded the locks. I mean, and the placards, you see the guy replacing the placards, brand new. Yeah, fresh he's when putting it comes the placard, back. yeah. Yes. Oh, it's all done here, actually. In so the then shop. you install them on the plane. I see Correct. how it works. Fresh and looks like brand new again. Yeah. So Sam, you see here in our shop, we also do um, repair for cargo nets to avoid throwing them out like ripping like this. Oh, this is ripped here. Ripped, yeah. There's a hole here, yeah. Yes. So there's uh, certain um, approvals or uh, requirements for stitching. We can restitch, reuse back to the aircraft. Ah, or just uh, right. throwing it out. You so repair them and yes. then you reuse them again. Correct. Yeah, this That's is correct. quite a special one for the pallets. Yes. For the covering the cargo pallets. That's correct, yes. I see. We have a small surprise for you. Can you maybe just push that button for us there? Yeah, push the button? Yes. Oh, we start cutting? Well, it's really interesting. I didn't know at the beginning, but this is a machine that can cut different shapes of the carpet because in the airplane, you have different uh, areas need to cover with the carpet, not in a uniform shape. So this takes care of all of that. Sam, welcome to Etihad Engineering Torture Chamber. Please have a seat. Whoa, this is some sort of torture chair. I yes. kind of see, see what kind of torture I'm getting. Uh, normally, this is the cushion that you see every time we change fabric or leather on an aircraft, we have to do a flammability test. This combination can take... So you will set uh, the seats cover here, the chairs on fire to test. That is correct. Horizontal and vertical, and uh, to me, the regulation. Right, so you're gonna put fire now, and then my bottom and my back will be on fire? That is correct. This okay. will go, automatically go back, and the sonic will start burning till it's finished, then, and after the, the set time is finished, we will check and see if it, this meets the flammability requirement for safe installation of the aircraft. Thank you for that huge eight hours tour. I've seen and learned so much new things about engineering that normally a regular fly would never see all this and hopefully people start to appreciate engineering. Has engineering has a future in the wake of COVID? Definitely. As long as there are aircraft, people need to look after those aircraft and that's where engineering comes in. Aviation has always been at the forefront of technology and it will continue to do so as we look to make more fuel efficient aircraft, aircraft that uh, have less environmental impact. Definitely aviation has a strong future and engineering will always be at the front of that. What's the advice for a lot of young aviators that want to be an engineer? There are lots of ways of entry into the aviation market. There are graduate entry programs, you can go to university, you can study aviation engineering and come in at design level, you can get an apprenticeship and start on the shop floor working through the licenses, becoming a licensed engineer uh, through practical methods. Lots of ways, if you want to do it, there's always a way to get involved. I know things are not great at the moment in aviation, but I strongly believe 
Aviation has a bright future for all the young generation and engineering will continue to drive to evolve.